you guys ask me all the time, what are the biggest Pinguicula and what are the smallest? So let's take a look at my collection and we're gonna talk about some of the biggest and the smallest. And just a note, this is not like the most comprehensive list of the smallest to biggest things of all time. These are plants that we love, that you know we're partial to, that we grow a lot. I'm gonna to try to also show you plants that I know are pretty easy to get. So like if you want one, you can go out and find it. I'm also gonna to try to show you plants that are fairly easy to grow because sometimes the really specialty things can be a little fussy and I want you to have the best success. So let's go take a look and also let's just apologize now for the rain. This is a greenhouse, it's got a plastic roof and we're in the middle of like a crazy superstorm. There's like thunder and lightning and wind and rain. So you're gonna hear that in the background and hopefully that's all right. Okay, let's look. I think we have to start with Alerzia. Alerzia is a great plant for a terrarium or another small planting. It is so cute. Like look at those planters just full to bursting of these plants. Keep in mind this is winter, so this is just the beginning of February here. So my plants don't have as much exposure to high light like they normally would. So they're actually significantly less pink than you would normally see. And you might be thinking, well, these guys look pretty pink, but the reality is that once they get a lot more light from the natural photo periods of the sun lengthening, they're gonna turn really, really pink. So it's fun because they're pink. They're these small little rosettes. There's different forms of Alerziae. So for instance, this is the standard Alerziae. This is cotton candy. This is actually one that gets crazy, crazy pink. We have Victoria, Mighty Mouse, which is the biggest form of Alerziae that we grow. Uh, we made it here. There's just a bunch of different Alerziaes, but they all tend to be around the same um, size, unless you're looking at, say, a Mighty Mouse. Mighty Mouse gets quite huge. Alerziae is really fun and rewarding to grow. It has these cheerful, cheerful pink flowers that are quite bright pink. It tends to be a pink plant, and it's really, really just so beautiful when planted in mass like this. And Alerziae, like the next thing I'm going to show you, is very easy to make from king leaf cuttings. So you pull a leaf out and you're able to make a new plant just like a succulent and they have a really high strike rate. So if you get like three or four of these, within a year or two, you can have a full pot of them just by taking the leaf pullings. So it's a wonderful plant to grow. And now let's look at another little teensy tiny cutie patootie that I love. I don't think we can talk about tiny pings without talking about Asteriana. This might be my number one recommendation for tiny pings if you want them. They're great for terrariums, they're great for sunny windowsills and small planters. Again, they have crazy cheerful flowers that are similar to the Alerziae flowers, but they're the, just this like sweet, sweet color combination with the yellow throats that kind of make me think of spring in this weird way. I don't quite know how to explain it, probably because they're sort of like a pastel Easter colors. They're like a little Easter egg. They're just really cute. Cute. And they have a similar form and shape to Alerzia, but the more you work with the plants, the more you can see the differences in these. These guys also will turn more pink when we have more light. And they have that same cute little rosette of leaves. Like here's the Alerzia, right? And these also will totally fill up a pot over time if you take the leaf pullings. These are really easy to make from leaf pullings. If you are looking for plants for a terrarium that you want to plant in, something that you want to have flower and mass in a way that is going to be really stunning, you can't go wrong with a Seriana. Another great plant is Halmavensis and crosses with Halmavensis. So this is a marginata by Halmavensis and you can see this is probably a little bit bigger than a tiny little plant, but it doesn't really get bigger than that. And it has like just the most adorable little flowers that are super, super happy and cheerful. It's another one where like, I actually just repotted these um, maybe two weeks ago and they're still bursting out. I probably should have thinned it out even more, but I couldn't bring myself to because just look how cool they look like this. They're just so amazing. Another one that does pretty well from leaf pullings. And it's one of those ones that I would also recommend for a sunny windowsill planter or in a terrarium because it has really robust growth. This one's really nice too because you can see the leaves don't go quite as succulent in winter, which is kind of a nice thing too. These next two plants you might be thinking look a lot like Alerzia and Seriana, and that is because they are related. So this is Yucca Dew right here, which is most likely the Seriana complex, and Florian, which is a hybrid with Dubrutiana. Dubrutiana is a very cute tiny little pink, and it's been hybridized with Seriana. So it has a very similar look. It's very, very cute, really, really pink and round and little adorable plants. All right, so now we should probably talk about some of our biggest plants. And I wanna do a quick caveat about this. First of all, most of our biggest plants are hybrids of plants like this, which is Gigantea. Gigantea is just the biggest species we're gonna have. And so we do a lot of crosses with it. So most of my biggest plants are going to be with Gigantea or with Morinensis A. Morinensis A also usually has very big flowers. So we like to cross it with that. 
Also, it is winter, so most of my plants are not at their full potential. I'll have to do another video when they're at like their full height. And you're gonna see a lot of like dyed back leaves. That's gonna give you an idea of what they would be growing out to during the summer. They're gonna get bigger every year. And even my jagged hair are a little on the small side right now. But we're gonna come back to those. First off, I have to talk about Alley Rose, which is across the Dave and Did. And the thing that is so cool about it is not only, I mean, the plants are huge. This was the span of this plant this summer. You can see these are the carnivorous leaves, these are the succulent leaves. These are huge, huge plants. They have these flowers on these very tall scapes. But one of the things that's so exciting about this plant are actually the size of the flowers. People don't really think about this, but like these are so impressive. These are show stoppers. They flower prolifically, like both of these are coming off of one plant. If you plant this in your house, it's like an orchid. It's just so showy and big with these rose shaped petals. It's a really fun, fun, big plant. This is a plant I'm recently obsessed with. It's a Lerzier by Gigantea. It is the exact thing that you would want these two plants to be. It's just like a super sized Lerzier. I mean, look at the size of this thing. It's huge. There's something about the color. It's this interesting kind of grossly white color. It's very unique. And also something you don't know is that these are very thick. It's a very stiff, thick plant. It's something that I'm gonna have to make some leaf pulling this year, but it's actually kind of difficult to ship because of the way it is. So it's a rare plant for us to even have available because it is such a difficult plant to make more of and to ship. Obviously the king of all of the things would be Gigantea. This is just a small pot of these plants and these are quite small actually. These things get gigantic and they are a really cool, fun plant to grow. They just get gigantic and huge. They have really cheerful flowers. They're really fun because they're kind of sticky on the undersides of the leaves as well as the tops of the leaves. And the thing about Gigantea is it actually likes to grow a little differently than the other pings. Like some of the Mex most of the Mexican and tropical pinguicula really like to dry out in the winter times. Gigantea doesn't like that, so we always have to keep it more watered. We don't necessarily let them sit in water in winter because that's a you know, recipe for rot with all of the cold weather. But we do keep these way more wet in the winter than we do any of the other pinguicula because that's just what they want. And the other tip I have for you is if you want the biggest pinguicula gigantea you can get, you need to grow them in lower light. If you grow them in lower light, they're going to become the size of your head. They're huge. When we've grown them in lower light in, the, in other areas of the nursery, they are literally the size of like my head. It's crazy. So pinguicula gigantea, just definitely the king of all things. This is the biggest one you can get. Perhaps my all-time favorite gigantic plant that we have in the nursery is this one, Morinensis A by Lauriana Calcarn Red. Damon's redone this cross several times, so we have a few different versions of it. And I thought you'd enjoy seeing, even in here, you can see this is a seed grown pot. Let's see if I can get these both in my hand. Look how different those flowers are. They always have huge flowers because of Morinensis A, but better than that, I mean, look at these rosettes. This is crazy. This is huge. This is like my entire hand. And again, these are in their succulent stage and they are so red and beautiful. These are even more succulent. You can see how big they used to be. These are the old leaves. And then look at this one. Look how amazing this is. It's just, it's so cool. When I hold this up, like it is gigantic. And then what's really fun is this is just a prop tray of them. These are the ones that we sell on our website if we can fit them into a cup. And that is like just a random one that's in there. But these are all just gigantic. They can be really veiny, as you can see. This is winter, so they're more green. But if this is how pink this is, and this is the old carnivorous leaves, you can kind of see. These are ridiculously pink. They have huge flowers, tall scapes. If you want a big ping that's really, really impactful, this is another one that you cannot go wrong with. It's just the perfect plant. These are two big pots of Ignata by Morinensis A seed grown, so there's a little bit of differences in the flowers. Again, let's see if I can get them in my hands so you can see. Just some slight differences. Look how stunning those are. Isn't that ridiculous? These are two that I haven't repotted yet because I have to separate them out, and I'm gonna put a bunch on our website um, because they're just too cool. I mean, look how red those are. They're just amazing. Again, you can see this is a Morinensis A hybrid. It's just a good plant if you want big, big plants. Let's just take a quick stroll down here because I also have more Morinensis to recommend. This is Morinensis superba. You just can't, I mean, this. these are like the little small plants. This is a big, big plant in the full summer and it has just the perfect pink flowers. 
And again, you're gonna see there's a lot of Morinensis. I'm just saying Morinensis over and over again, or Gigantea crosses. This is Morinensis G, and it's another, that's another big plant. So if you're looking for big plants, stick with Giganteas, Morinensis, like A, or Morinensis Superba. And then if you want something really tiny and you want something that's gonna stay super compact, the two that I recommend are gonna be a Seriana and a Lursiae. So those are my, my recommendations for your top two, small and big. For your big, it's gonna be the Gigantea and the Morinensis A. And for the small, a Seriana and a Lursiae. I hope that helps.